गुरु कृपा के बलम नमस्ते नमस्ते एवरीवन वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सत्संग टुडे सतगुरु श्री मुझी बाबा की जय either god is the only possibility or god is an impossible it is completely binary either only god is or there is no god you cannot the biggest invitation to suffering is this notion of to god and me or another and me and see come to this inside to this discovery that all of this is god or guru or self whatever you call it the one with attributes the one without attributes see saguna or nirguna the one god one self the pure witnessing itself the pure being itself that which appears in the light of this pure being all of it is one that is why this is advait that there are no two there are no distinctions and this seems to have become the theme for satsang in the last few days and it's very beautiful because if this itself we recognize in this moment as our truth that all of this is just manifestation of one being then what is the next step do you need a next step if you start in god then what is where does your next step have to go So when i say you have never left the destination this is what i mean we are running 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 towards the mythical thing without checking where we actually are whether it is a material seeker or a spiritual seeker seeking is a type of running towards trying to run towards quite a radically insane thing <laughs> the seeker idea it's like saying oh, i'm i refuse to check what i already am but i want something which will i feel will be really useful for me <laughs> i want that great thing which will be very useful for me but i refuse to check if the me is valid or there is actually a me like this here that's a seeker i'm seeking something that i want i'm clear that this is what i want but i'm not clear about who the i is in the, is in the first place and you will start for one moment look not even start we can't we don't even have to say start looking <laughs> just for one moment look this what you find is all the god that you will ever find there is no special god sitting somewhere especially waiting for your seeking to happen to at a certain level and then ah that object that god will come what is here now Maharaj Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj said, "The only truth we can speak is that I am, and ultimately, even this is not true." All the rest 
everything else is a story, which is a nicer way of saying is a lie. Everything. Or the sage was lying to us. You decide. <laughs> Do you feel like the sage was lying to us when he said, the only truth I can speak is that I am. And ultimately, even that is not true. And Bhagavan said, all of this is one being, which is an aspect of the one self, one Brahman. And Guruji says, all that is, is the isness, isness itself. Their words are worthy of our consideration. Yogi Ram Surat Kumar said something very beautiful, but if you give it to the mind, it's very confusing. If they are looking for God, why do you even admit to the possibility that there is something else? If God is what you want, then God is what you have. Here. Isn't it? Remember this beautiful uh, interaction that Papaji had? Someone said, Papaji, can you show me God? He said, yes, I show you God. I'm paraphrasing. I show you God. But if you doubt, you won't see God. I show you God. But if you doubt, then you won't see God. He says, what do you see now? He said, I do. I don't see God. <laughs> the prophet said, don't. I said, don't doubt. Don't is doubt. What do you see now? I see God. <laughs> I started laughing. Really? It is not just a play of words. It's a switch of perspective. It is a dropping of some false notion. And to meet this appearance, make it of any preconception, all you see is God. The one that sees is God. That which is seen is God. The space in which it appears is God. The seeming movement of time is God. It's just that we have had some idea about it. That idea we never meet. That idea we never meet. The reality is always here. So then the switch of perspective is this. How long will we be in denial of what is? The refusal to see this reality for what it is and to play with some ideas of not just about ourselves but also about God. The make-believe me wants to find a make-believe God. Whereas in reality, there is only one. It is this simple. So if you start to include everything, so all appearances and the space of appearances, that being in the light of which these appearances appear, can't figure these things out, okay? Many times I notice that as I'm saying these things, many of you can pick up this idea that I have to figure this out. How, I'm, how is my being the light of this appearance? You cannot figure it out, but this is your experience. You wake up first and the world wakes up. You wake up and then time wakes up. This is your experience every day. You are, I am. And then body is, world is, people are, family is, all. Prior to time, you are. Prior to space, you are. 
when you were when i am was resting in the eye there was no space and time there was no world to experience and yet you were so i'm talking about your experience and not your inferences so we played with these inferences long enough and they are not getting us anywhere we cannot compute our way to god <laughs> this is a big calculation and oh god <laughs> who am i 577000 into <laughs> 648 times and then god <laughs> what just is if you don't pick up this idea of me if you don't pick up any idea of any distinction at all no me no you no inside no outside no awareness no consciousness <laughs> the most hallowed words of such no god in his creation no guru no disciple is still here <laughs> is it existence is independent of even the best notions even the best pretends it seems to get us to this notionlessness itself at some point is not needed This is Guruji. This is what he means. He says, "Come to me naked." Otherwise, we're just playing this dance of projection. You are my master, so you should be like this. Oh, he's my disciple. You should be like this. Like any other relationship, he's my husband. You should be like this. She's my wife. You should be like this. He's my girlfriend. Oh, just dance of projection. Did you meet the master also in this way? And there's like a split second. You know the definition of a split second? You you heard this one? A split second is that when a light in India turns green, the traffic light, and the person behind you presses the horn. <laughs> That is a split second. Another definition of split second is when you call someone your guru, and then tell them everything that they are supposed to do and exactly how they are supposed to be. <laughs> this is split second. Okay, now that you are my master, you should be saying like this. This is how you should be doing the self inquiry. <laughs> this is how. <laughs> Sometimes I joke and say, so who is the master and who is the disciple in this equation? Because if you already know exactly what is needed. Then you don't need any help, apparently. But this is true for all our projections. Now that you are my girlfriend, this is how you should be. Now that you are this thing, if you are my son, you will be like this. If you are my father, why can't you be like this? So when we, so when we meet the master, and Guruji says, "Meet me naked," he means meet me empty of projection for just a few moments and see what you actually find. About yourself, what is here? Empty of our ideas about it. Empty of expectations, interpretations, judgments. Which one of these do you need to exist? That you can have. The mind is convinced you that. without this you are nobody nothing but actually you are the god the lord himself the self what do you need to do now
it is before satsan started we we gave him this bhajan there is one revolutionary seat sir i'm very happy my uh, chanting beads broke this morning very happy my chanting beads broke this morning and it sound oh, what <laughs> all this burden of chanting ram is gone off my head then he says ram is chanting me why do i need to chant ram is this you can recognize doesn't mean that all of us have to become some revolutionary <laughs> radical yeah, that happens that is fine too but and you see the only god is only ram is this pretense of worship the pretense of being a practitioner that is the trouble not the practice in itself what is the true position everything is god and every movement is the will of god we follow the will of god or we follow the master's grace it's all the same the revolutionary said if it was just the dip in the ganga it would make me free then all these fishes and frogs would be free they to be free first you have to be rid of the me and without this me everything is a spiritual practice <laughs> you could be in a jump rope that's a spiritual practice <laughs> all there is is spirit is it without the me only god is only spirit is but with the me even the deepest spiritual practice is just egoistic and the good news is what that our natural position is god the effortful position effortful position is me and this is something the mind will fight to the nail to convince you that it is the opposite that you it will convince you that to become free you have to do something and to remain bound to remain bound is your natural state. to be limited is your natural state and to become free you have to do certain things is the primary notion of the mind If your being can taste your being now, your being can just taste your being now. You see that no worldly taste compares to this, and yet all worldly tastes are just a part of this.
as you come to this beautiful definition of what is, as you come to this motionless existence, it is naturally present. There are no words are needed. All terminology is pointless. So all these fallacies now have been brought. Many times it is our spiritual, what I call fantasification, which gets in the way. We have these fantastic ideas of God, almost like Arjuna in a way. And ultimately when God had said, okay, I have to make this one fight, so let me, let me show him some fantastic visuals for now, <laughs> while he discovers the truth a little later. have these ideas of what God should be like. Just like we have ideas of how every relationship should be, how our life should be. But without those, empty of those, what is here? If God is not here, then there is no God. If God is lost, then they cannot be a God. <laughs> so God has to be found. What kind of God would that be? What is God? That which is everywhere. That which is everything. And how to lose him or find him. This itself is such a beautiful truth. Because everything in the world you can do. You cannot lose God. Yeah? So what is it here that you cannot lose? You lose this world. This body sensation. All gone. Heart also sometimes. All gone. Gone. No emotion. Gone. Even this sense of being ultimately comes and goes. What is aware of all of this? Can you lose that? Lose that which is aware of all things. That which witnesses everything. Lose that witness. Keep that aside. This is the fundamental essence of your existence. This is the self which plays as manifest and unmanifest. As all the states and the content of the states. As all the qualities. Millions of bodies it has, it has had, and yet it has never been a body.
all that is known, the knower knowing. Have just been expressions of this knowingness itself. What is it that you can never lose? Because God always is. God is all there is. As Guruji says, if you throw everything out, you come to a point where this cannot be thrown out. What is this? Throw everything out. Yeah? What cannot be thrown out? One who is able to throw the self out, present yourself. <laughs> One who is no longer aware, present yourself. You cannot do it. Because even if you were to say, hey, I'm not aware. <laughs> it's just another way of saying, I'm aware that I'm not aware. <laughs> there are some who sometimes they say like that. No, they mean they, they're talking about attention rather than awareness. They, in the middle there, I just lost awareness of this. I lost my awareness for a while. You say, but who's aware that you lost awareness for that time? Who was there to be aware of that? So many times awareness is confused with perception or attention. If you're talking about that which is aware of all things, including the fundamental functioning of perception itself. Before you take the next step to finding yourself, you have to do the impossible step of losing yourself. The self is always, even to say always here is not accurate. Always here is within the self. But you can see, so you have to say something. It sounds logical. So the self is always here. And the only way it troubles itself is with this, with this idea of me. It doesn't really truly have any trouble ever, but it plays with this trouble. Is with this idea of the me that is the sufferer, the me that was wronged, the me who is the victim. 
the me who is special, the me who is enlightened. It's probably the Olympics of the. If any me wants to hold on to enlightenment. me who had spiritual experience yesterday. All masks of me, or various masks of trouble itself. But without this me, Nothing is ever suffered. No, there is no sufferer to suffer. And we have seen by now that even this seemingly humble question of so how do I adopt this me is not valid. Because automatically it is gone. Could it be then that even the question how to drop the me is a way to keep the me alive? That any reference that we believe to the me is just a trick of the mind to keep this non existent me, the pretense of the me alive. On the conveyor belt of the mind. Right now, for many of you, various offerings might be coming. All offerings of maybe some very beautiful positions. I'm really getting this. <laughs> Not getting this at all. It could be any, anything. But none of them are valid about the real you. No conclusion that you make about yourself. Is the truth. <coughs> that in some way is something I love about Zen. You think you're doing Zen, you're not doing Zen. You think you're not doing Zen, you're not doing Zen. You think you're getting it, it's not Zen. You think you're not getting it, it's not Zen. If you think you figured out the sound of one hand clapping, it's not Zen. If you feel you're completely confused about this, it's not Zen. <laughs> Nothing you can really say about yourself is valid. If all notions become invalid, does their existence stop? So this therefore is your notionless existence.
Nobody who discovers these simple truths leads to the sense of achievement. And therefore, to the mind, it can seem very unsatisfactory. In the play of the world, when we try to get after something and gotten it, there's a sense of achievement. This discovery is the discovery of that which has always been. It's always just been this. So what is one achieved? So what you are discovering is very simple. Just naturally present. It's a natural presence itself. But when the mind tries to mix the me into this, ah, this is you see look at what great insights I am having. And you produce the one that is having these insights. Is the claimer of any insight actually having any insight? <laughs> hmm? Never that. That's why the words of satsang sound different. And it's just a claim some special experience. Their intuitive presence, their intuitive words is empty of the me notion. Even if it uses the words you and me, it's talking about the one being. It's just consciously speaking with itself. That was very good for today. Thank you all so much for being in Satsang today. But Guru Shri Muji Baba Ki Jai. Guru Shri Ananda Ji Ki Jai. Guru Kripa Kivan.